So one of the things I talk about is um, that, uh, you know, addiction, There, there's very specific symptoms um, that we look out for when we're diagnosing. So when a person goes to the doctor with symptoms like a sore throat or a runny nose or coughing, um, a fever, you know, a doctor might try to figure out, a medical provider would try to figure out, is it a viral infection? Is it a, a bacterial infection? You know, based on their symptoms. Mm -hmm. So when someone goes in for a substance abuse assessment, we kind of look for the same thing. Like what, what are their specific symptoms? Um, so typically what I do is I ask a lot of questions um, and I won't ask questions directly. I'll kind of more describe the symptoms. So for example, blackouts, I won't say, you know, do you have a blackout? I would say something like, you know, when, when you drink, do you have a period of, of time that, um, you know, you may not remember how you got home or people said you did things or say things that you don't remember. Um, another key symptom of addiction, of course, is increased tolerance, um, where people tend to use more and more of the drug um, to get the same effect. And of course, that's different with, with marijuana um, because marijuana is, um, you know, it binds to fat cells where all the other drugs, including alcohol, um, are water soluble. So for example, alcohol comes out in the urine and, and the sweat where marijuana, the THC binds to the fat cells um, in our body. And when I say that, um, I'll typically, you know, describe something like the two major areas of the body that have the highest concentration of fat cells are your brain and your genital area. So we're not talking about like the fat on your arms, you know, that's not where the THC is, is being stored. It's really being stored in your brain, which, um, you know, gives us problems remembering and concentrating, difficulty learning, um, those sorts of things. The third um, classic symptom of addiction is what we call loss of control. So for example, um, if people um, attempt to cut down and they're not successful, or they quit um, and they end up going right back to using. Um, a physical withdrawal, um, a lot of people imagine like back in the days when people used crack cocaine and they would you know, go through withdrawal and they'd look for crack on the carpet. And that's, that's not what we look at for, um, for cravings or withdrawal. We look for more kind of subtle things like the way people think, like, um, you know, like, um, gosh, I haven't drank for two weeks. I can't really be an alcoholic. Um, another myth out there right now, again, is with marijuana use that people um, imagine that marijuana, the THC isn't addictive or, you know, you can't develop a problem, that it's natural. Um, so, um, so we look at um, probably about eight or nine symptoms for um, differentiating if somebody has like alcohol use disorder, mild, moderate, or severe, um, opiate use disorder, mild, moderate, severe, marijuana use disorder. Again, we look at mild, moderate, or severe based on um, uh, the different symptoms. The other thing that I promote is that anybody can become chemically dependent. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. Um, it doesn't matter you know, what religion you are. Um, or moral beliefs that anyone, if they use enough um, and they have a genetic predisposition and possibly some trauma, um, can develop a, a substance use disorder.